This year's Apple iPhone 16 lineup is driven by just a handful of things. Their colors, of which I've got what in my opinion is the best, the ultramarine blue, Apple Intelligence, which at this moment isn't available, a big camera upgrade, and some hardware changes sort of sprinkled in. So let's start with the last. If you pick up the iPhone 16, it'll feel no different to the 15. Dimensionally and hardware-wise, it's the same as last year, but is one gram lighter, which is nothing in real life. Up front, the display is also the same, 6.1 inches, 60 hertz, Super Retina XDR OLED, but this year you get a stronger coating of ceramic shield protection, which I think you'd only be able to comment on with longer use, and no, I am not drop testing this phone. It's a shame Apple is still persisting with 60 hertz, because the difference between it and 120 hertz is very noticeable even for the average person, and for the premium you pay, you're blatantly getting ripped off by Apple with the iPhone 16. Quality-wise, I have no complaints though, but I did feel the speakers sound a bit tinny, so that's something I wanted to point out. The heart and soul of the iPhone 16, in my opinion, is the chipset and the camera. Apple claims the 16 series is built with AI in mind, but it's sad that none of these AI features are on the iPhone 16 yet, in fact, not even on the Pro variants. The update for the same is due sometime mid-October, which is about a week away, but from the looks of it, it'll not be game-changing. The major takeaways are you'll get ChatGPT integrated into the UI, be it when it comes to dealing with text and emails, things like summaries, for example, or organizing your notifications, but that's it. There is more to AI and it'll be evolving in the next couple of years to come, but in its current phase, it feels more like a ChatGPT wrapper on iOS 18 than anything else. Other features like custom Genmoji generation and visual intelligence are also part of Apple intelligence, but that's coming even later. I'm interested in visual intelligence, mainly because it'll make the camera control button have some use. And I say that because in its current state, I feel it's a gimmick or a party trick and nothing more than that solely because of its position, and I've talked more about this in my video right here. More so, launching the camera can very well be done by the new action button, which is also a new feature on the iPhone 16 this year. To be honest, I do miss the alert slider, I said that even last year with the 15 Pro, but hey, you've got to deal with it and now this is what you get and you accept and move on, because that's what you get with the Apple ecosystem. Back to the camera control button, it's essentially a tool to control various aspects of your camera. You can click to take a picture or light press and swipe to navigate through different options of the camera. But I feel Apple missed the trick here, one with positioning and two with it not doubling as something else, like maybe a fingerprint scanner. While we're here, let's also talk about the camera. Compared to the 15, there's no change in the main lens, but the ultra wide is different now with autofocus support. And that's the big change in practice, which means you'll be able to take macro images with the iPhone 16. And I've got some samples in this video I've posted earlier. Then there's support for spatial video given the movement of the cameras in the back for the few people in the world that film this stuff. I don't know who does, but if you do, you've got that. But beyond these things and software processing differences due to the A18 chip aside, you'll get an identical experience to the iPhone 15, both in terms of images and also in terms of video recording, where you will be capped at 4K 60 FPS and will not go more than that to 120 FPS, which is only reserved for the Pro models of the 16 series. Sure, the same A18 chip also means performance is bumped up and things will be snappier, but it's fairly minor and I don't think it's game changing. Also, I didn't find gaming to be too enjoyable on the iPhone 16 like Apple claimed in its keynote, just because the display lets things down completely. I'm used to playing on a high refresh rate display, and with this being a 60Hz panel, gaming, be it any game, just feels a bit off. The device also heats up a fair bit 10-15 to 15 minutes into a game, and it also drops frames, so overall, I'm a bit disappointed. And that's the general theme of the iPhone 16 in my opinion. A lot that's new doesn't necessarily feel worth it and the big feature which is AI isn't here yet. 
I'd say at the iPhone 16's price, there's way better non-Apple products in the market for you to consider if, let's say, iOS is something that you can sacrifice on. And AI doesn't really make a strong case for the smartphone, especially now. We're about a few weeks into the launch cycle of the iPhone 16, but the update is still only yet to come, and we don't know when it's gonna come. If you really want an iPhone, the iPhone 15 is still good enough, and you'll save some money and also not really lose out on a lot. Perhaps only the one thing you would lose out on is battery life where the 16 is significantly better, but I don't think that's the only reason why you should upgrade to a 16. So that's all for this one. Do let me know what you guys think about the iPhone 16 down in the comments and also my opinions on the iPhone 16 as well. Thanks for watching. Do subscribe for more videos to come. This was Vabov and I'll see you in the next one. Adios.